in this lecture we will learn about domain name system okay so what is domain name system let's start with an example so we human have a tendency to remember names much easier than numbers okay so similarly if we have google.com okay so it's much easier to remember google.com we can easily remember facebook.com than something like its ip address let's say 152.67.32.8 or facebook for example 2 so 132.65.53 65.15.9 okay so these numbers are difficult but everyone can easily remember facebook.com google.com they are much easier to remember so like telephone or even now in your mobile so what happens so it's not that easy to remember the 10 digit number so what we have we have the contact list so there you remember your friend's name okay it's Bob it's John so I just look at the name and then the mapping from name to the phone number let's say 9834730303 so that number will be maintained by your contact list so similarly for this one so google facebook.com these are easy to remember you type it www.google.com and the dns server so this server which maps the name of the url or the domain name to the ip address is known as domain name server okay so let's see the example what is the ip address okay so what is the ip address of udel.edu so this is the name server and it will reply you back it is 128 .175 so now you have no problem you type www.udel.edu inside that to contact in the network at the ip layer so it will have to know the ip address it comes from the dns server and it will fetch you the web page okay so the name server can do in fact the opposite of that also i give it the ip address and it can return me the name of that particular server so what is the host name for 128.175.13.74 so it will say that okay it's trust.udel.edu so this is the concept of domain name server so there let's now talk about namespace so what is a namespace so specifications for structured namespace and data associated with the namespace okay so it basically tells that you look at websites okay so for example we have www.umass.edu okay so this is a website okay or a web server okay and now you should know the ip address of this one then we can also have something like you can see www.cs.umass.edu so now inside that particular university i'm also specifying that okay open the web page for the cs department then we can have something more okay i can have the some research lab name okay so for example algo of course it might not exist cs.eumass.edu so now these are now we can extend okay so these are coming so hierarchy you can see the hierarchy so edu is for educational websites okay inside that i tell it to particularly that okay university of massachusetts now from there i tell it that okay now inside that so i'm zooming in so you go to the cs department inside that you go to the algorithm group okay so this way so we are in a hierarchy so like in a google map so you see india's map on it on the globe and then you pinpoint to some of your state location then inside your city and so on so resolvers a client program that extracts the information from name servers okay so they will ask you that okay what is the ip address for 
google.com and name server will reply with the ip address so name servers or the domain name server it holds the structure of the names so now let's look at the namespace okay so namespace starts with a root okay where it shows nothing much but it has to delegate the request so at root level you have dot com dot edu dot let's say dot net then we might have org and so on so this is the root level after that now it will the last name in your url will be these top level notes okay which tell that okay it is a educational website it's a commercial website and so on so this whole thing is now a domain for dot com this is for dot edu so they are like subtrees and they are called domains dot com you can have let's say facebook okay so facebook dot com then inside that you can have something else so whatever you want facebook so we might have uh, engineering so engineering.facebook.com inside that cs.engineering.com and so on okay and you traverse this way up to the root you get the url so cs.engine.facebook.com so dns so we were talking to so root level we might have org net edu com and uk okay so this is the last one okay that you will see on your url so it's kind of a suffix then it proceeds that okay in edu you have cmu and in that i'm going to cs and in that as group cmcl so the ip address now will follow from the leaf to the root www.cmcl.cs.cmu dot edu okay so it goes to the top and this is and in this way even if i have so it might happen that instead of cmu it was stanford okay let's say or mit then again i could have the same c in fact it is natural that mit cmu stanford all of them will have a cs department so even though these can be the same but in the suffix in the end this cmu mit the university name will be different so it will become cml cmcl.cs.mit.edu so they will be it will be guaranteed that they will be different okay now so it's this whole tree is a zone okay with the root and then we also have these sub trees okay here so single node so this is a complete tree so this way you can represent the dns as a tree but you can imagine how big this tree will be okay so hence it's always a distributed data database kind of thing so no one is the root is not going to store everything it will just know that okay if you are asking the ip address for something which ends with dot com it will send the request to dot com if it find that okay you are finding the ip address for sorob school okay sorob school dot org then it doesn't know what is the ip address but it knows that it's ending with org so it will send the request to dot org name server and so on so in this way this org stores all the ip addresses at least it knows how to find all the ip addresses for dot org websites and so on so resolvers map a name to an ip address okay and vice versa so the resolver it will query the name server it will get back the response or the ip address so now there are two kinds of resolvers okay iterative one and a recursive one let's look at iterative resolution so client is there it asks that okay what is the ip address of udel okay so let's try to see here so it is going something like what is the ip address of google.com and then the name server in the university itself udel server it asks it udel server now says that okay i don't know the ip address of your google.com but i can give you the referral okay that try a3.nstld.com another name server which will know the 
which might know the IP address of google.com. So it goes the request. Now this client itself makes the request to this a3.nstld.com. Okay. And then what happens? Iterative response. It says, I don't know but you it gives you the ip address it's making you come nearer to the address so it says that okay try out the root server okay so a dot root servers dot net so now this reply comes to the client it directly contacts a dot root server what is the ip address of google.com it says that i don't know but try a gtld servers .net. so it gives another name server so this server now handles all the ip addresses for dot com website so it goes there and this server it asks the same question it tells that okay try ns1.google.com so now it sends to the dns server which stores addresses for google.com okay so it goes to ns1.google.com it gets the reply back so this is the iterative and finally ns1.google.com sends the ip address is 216.239.37.99 okay so this way there is iterative resolution okay so i ask udel server it replies that okay next ask this one refers to the next person then client asks to a3.nstld.com it again sends me the referral for a dot root server and so on finally ns1.google.com replies with the ip address but it's always the communication between the client and other name servers what is recursive resolution here what happens is the client asks the request and instead of every reply coming to the client it goes progressively so you tell it goes to the udel server what is the ip address of google.com udel does not know it's asked the it sees that okay it asked its own a2 server it does not know it asked the root server now root server sees that okay there is a dot com in the end so it goes to the dot com server dot com now knows that okay this is google.com so i should go to the google name server it goes there now the reply does not come directly to client this reply goes to dot com server now dot com server sends the reply to root server root server because this was asked from the edu server it replies back to the edu server that ip address of google.com is 216.239.37.99 it then goes to the edu server it replies back to the udel server and udel server now reply back to the client okay so it happens like this so this is recursive resolution so what is good and bad about these two different ways for name resolution so recursive resolution and iterative one so iterative it's the same client asking many times and here so here you might have caching scope of caching will be there at dot com server edu server and so on and then there the root server here is a bottleneck okay so if this goes down so you might not contact other servers so this might be there so lookup methods again telling the same thing okay so there is something little bit i will talk about caching so there is a name server okay so my own university name server so so many people are asking it to find the ip addresses of different servers so what it does is that if let's say like famous websites like google.com and something like facebook they are opening always in two three minutes by different people and then you are if you are doing recursive query iterative query so many times it's wasting your time so instead of that that university name server itself will make a cache of the names and the ip addresses and it will say that okay google.com is at this particular ip address okay but that cache data should always be updated so there is a ttl value that okay time to live so it will update it, this name's IP address after some time.
so this is there and i hope you understand about domain name servers thanks a lot